OK, our next example of a brilliant move, one of the most brilliant moves ever played on many people's lists, is this game taken from Yuri Averbark versus Alexander Kotov, played in Zurich 1953. Now, as many of you already know, I have a deep fascination for many of Kotov's ideas, especially the ideas presented in the book Think Like a Grandmaster, which for me represented a kind of algorithmic view of how we could think like computers with like candidate moves and building up analysis trees. And Kotov looked at various types of analysis trees and it was very, very scientific and impressive. And I've often wondered about the true context of the book. Was it a kind of, uh, you know, showing off that, uh, you know, research uh, was was above, you know, the Western world, you know, into chess, into the science of chess, making chess into a scientific game where you could just study positions in such a systematic manner? Or was it, you know, a way of documenting uh, analysis after, you know, building up analysis trees after a game? Um, which is still useful, you know, for game annotation to build up analysis trees. Um, maybe it's good for team consultation games, you know, if if there's a shared analysis tree, how is that built up, you know, with candidate moves. The concept's still valid, you know, and I've continually asked chess players of all strengths over the last few years, you know, what do they think of it? And, you know, recently, actually, someone said something very interesting. When you haven't got a clue what's going on in the position, you could start thinking about candidate moves. So maybe it could be a last resort uh, for thinking. Maybe you know you could reserve it for ultra critical positions, where you want to systematically make sure you're not missing any key moves. So whatever, it created a big splash for me. You know his book Think Like Grandmaster, and checking on Wiki, also apparently he was a great admirer of the world champion Alexander Alekhine and apparently wrote a comprehensive full-volume biographical series of books uh, for, for Aliakin's, uh, you know life and career. These were published between 1953 and 58. But as I mentioned, you know, his book uh, Think Like Grandmaster, which was actually part of a trilogy of books. There was Think Like Grandmaster, Play Like Grandmaster, Train Like Grandmaster. It's these three which he's best known for. Now, his most famous combination is a bit marred. Many people are noticing it's a bit marred because actually it was the time when there was a, you know, ad adjudications, not adjudications, adjournments. Uh, I keep thinking of the Hertfordshire League. Um, adjournments. This, this was an adjourned game, but Kotov, before the adjournment took place, played, you know, a, a move which again could come under criticism if if you, if you sense that there was at least a forced draw because then the risk level of playing such a move goes dramatically down some other brilliant moves have also been criticized in, in the same manner um you know like Kasparov's brilliant rook d4 against um Toplov so, so sometimes you know brilliant moves come under that particular criticism uh, that you know was there a huge risk? So here the risk factor is taken down by two pegs at least. You know if he had the luxury of it being, um, you know, a team of his, his analysts helping him overnight to carry on after such a move. So anyway, if I give you thirty seconds here, or you may want to stop the video, have a look at this position, and try and guess what Kotov played here, and. Give yourself uh, like a million extra bonus points if you can see the follow-up continuation. <laughs> okay, so 30 seconds starting from now. Okay, the move Kotov played was queen takes h3. We all love a great queen sack. So how does this one work? Well, it's sucking the white king up the board. So king takes h3. Now we sing, swing the rook in. Check. Now the knight gets in on the action with a check. So where's the king going? Well, in the game, king f5. Now here, uh, there are two moves actually which are uh, Ribka seems to like. Kotov's move is one of them actually. Knight g4 uh, seems strong as well. This wasn't played by Kotov. 
Um, so what's going on here in, in this? Well, with the king so far up the board, you know, the mating net probabilities are really increasing. It seems if white doesn't play knight takes <coughs> f4 here, he could be mated in five moves. For example, if he plays bishop h4, check. Where's the king going? It's going nowhere. The, the, the um, If king takes g4 here, then this rook takes h4 mate. Um, and if bishop f6, then there's another mating net just uh, taking here. Then rook fg6, check. And that, that's, that's a mate there. So there's ma mating nets all, all around the place here. So it seems knight g4 is, is a pretty strong move um, in this position, as well as what Kotov played, which is knight d7. An another branch, let's have a <laughs> given Kotov was into uh, trees of analysis, and they've got knight takes f4, different candidate move. <laughs> so um, rook g8. Uh, so this now threatens rook f6 mating. So knight h5 stops the immediate rook f6. But now rook hg6. And here this is very tricky because rook hg6 is protecting the knight, uh, which means rook f8 is now mating threat. So white would have to give up the queen here with queen g5 is the best move. If bishop h4, which is another desperate move, then just taking, um, and it's just delaying the inevitable really, you know. So so there's there's a mating uh, net which the white king's not able to get out. But um, okay, let's let's go to the game continuation. So knight d7. Uh, so this this has got very very serious threats in the game. Rook g5 was played. All right, let's let's imagine um, a different move is played. Just 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 to see what the main uh, threat is. There's a mating free here. Check, check. I see, and then rook f6. So that's that's what White's up against here. These checks galore in this position, <laughs> checking paradise. So rook g5 was played by um, Cotton's poor opponent. After check, now we have a knight check, toying with the king, like a cat toying with a mouse. King comes back, and now knight g8 check. What is this torture? <laughs> Another check. Okay, now finally, Kotov, um does something else. He takes on d5. So the knight takes d5. Again, what's the what's the point now? Okay, apart from winning a pawn, surely he wants to mate the white king. Off the check. Is there a subtle difference from the previous position after that munch on d5? Well, knight g8 check. <laughs> and now, actually, um, it's become um, perhaps clearer for some reason that actually the move bishop takes g5 is very strong in this position. So Kotov played bishop takes g5 um, and Ribka likes that very much as the only kind of winning move here. So what's happened here? This is quite far down after the queen sack. Bishop takes g5, king takes g5 and now the killer move um, and it seems to be the only killer move. Uh, if I give you 10 seconds, can you spot it here? So we're very far down from a queen sack, very, very deep queen sack combination. So this move uh, is it se seems to be massive advantage for black. If I give you uh, 10 seconds here. OK. Rook f7. So what? On earth, is Rook F7 doing? I think it's simply fascinating actually. Rook G7 and then the King F5, Rook F6. Um, let's let's just prove that token move. Okay, there. There's Rook G7. This this is the immediate threat mating two. So with Rook F7. So with that knight's actually doing a useful job now of protecting that Rook. Uh, to make way for this rook g7. Okay. 
Uh, so the opponent, actually, after rook f7, play bishop h4, just to try and guard this f6 square from this, this killer rook f6 coming up. Still, Kotov is winning. He plays rook g6 check. And now, in this position, there's another move which is uh, crushing, and it's maybe another only move. I wonder if you can spot it here. Uh, actually, it's, it's quite simple once you spot the idea. Okay, so 10 seconds here. Okay, rook fg7. So the immediate threat now is rook h6 mate. So the bishop tries to stop that. Now Kotov takes. And now what do we have? We have another potential mate threat now, knight f6, because now there's rook h5 as a mate threat. So the opponent's getting desperate, he plays knight g3. Kotov just takes on g3. Um, so that, that knight g3 was again to stop knight takes h5. So um, Kotov's getting enough material now. Um, but uh, queen takes d6, did he have to take that d5 pawn earlier? He's give, giving this possibility now of queen takes d6 from earlier, which the opponent takes. But um, in this position now, uh, Kotov plays rook on the third rank to g6. So again, renewing this threat now of rook h6 mate. So it's only the queen which might be able to stop it, maybe. So check. And after rook g8, finally the opponent resigns. He has to give up his queen, otherwise he's faced with rook h6 mate. So that's a bit of an intricate kind of sequence after the king's sucked down the board. It's a classic queen sack. I'm I think I might have shown you it before in the Kotov series. I'll put the Kotov series of videos about candidate moves, which was a classic in that classic book, Think Like Grandmaster. But um, so Kotov was, he's actually featured in, in my book, Warriors of the Mind. And apparently, um, you know, his style has been compared um, in apparently to that of a sledgehammer. He twice played in the candidates Budapest 1950 and Zurich 1953. Kotov's games were brilliant, but first place in the challenge to Botvinnik eluded him. So in his West, he was largely known for his column in Soviet Weekly, a model of what regular chess columns should be, with recent news and always well annotated games. So actually, this this game fragment is given as an example of his brilliance. It's it's his best known brilliance but as I say there's some there's some things about it which um, I'm I'm curious though uh, I don't know if you guys are sorry just replaying back f from the game what I'm curious about is why was this knight takes d5 episode uh, necessary is there some subtle thing going on which we're missing here couldn't um, uh, the knight um, have just played knight g8 check here like the game. If we if we just try this knight g8 check like the game, um, and then there's again there's the idea bishop takes g5 is again kind of a winning idea. Uh, you know because if if king takes then rook f7 again. So yeah, knight takes d5 seems strictly unnecessary. So I wouldn't say. The implementation after uh, the queen sacrifice was totally like optimal, which is also strange. If it is true, then this story that loads of people were analysing it over overnight. Why wouldn't a more optimal continuation be found? Why this continuation with knight takes d5? That's a bit of a mystery to me, actually. Um, if you guys know the answer to that, you know, please let me know. Um, Oh no! So, so this was earlier in the game. I'll put the full game uh, in in the description of the video as well as the link to to the series of videos I did on um, Kotov's candidate move system. So let's let's step back from the queen sack again. So queen takes h3, using the queen to get the king out. Another nice thing for the king's engine player to know to to, to sack the queen if if nothing else, bring the king down. Then the king was like played with like a cat playing with a mouse. This uh, check, check again, 
multiple checks and then this strange knight takes d5 which seems completely unnecessary uh, but now Kotov finally finds the right track that actually bishop takes g5 is, is, is a crushing move uh, with this idea of simply playing rook f7 silent killer after with rook g7 and rook f6 so this knight is actually playing a pivotal role in protecting f6 and h6 so um, so rook f7 and then uh, white's position is getting a bit desperate so check now here threatening rook h6 mate so big material loss ensues this queen takes d6 which shouldn't have really been an option you know why why, why was that pawn taken on d5 earlier nevertheless you know Kotov is still winning here his opponent resigned hope you enjoyed it please leave any comments or questions on YouTube and check out the uh, the playlists and links in the description thanks very much